Hello to all my friends out at the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Uh, freedom from religion means freedom of religion, and freedom of religion means freedom from religion because uh, people aren't going to be able to exercise uh, the religion of their choice or the philosophy of their choice if you have theocrats imposing a particular religious creed on all of society. So I'm thrilled to be here with you, even in absentia. Obviously, we've got some important things going on in Washington, D.C., uh, and I'm delighted and honored and gratified to receive um, the Clarence Darrow Award. And uh, I've got this right by my desk so Clarence Darrow can keep a, a close watch over me. And I want to thank you for this award, which means a whole lot to me. I'm going to put it down because it's kind of heavy. Uh, but this award is important to me for a few reasons. One is that uh, Clarence Darrow was... Uh, a great lawyer who thought systematically and logically uh, about stuff. And I think that that is the mindset we have to try to bring to public things. The second reason it's important to me is because he was a very passionate crusader against capital punishment. And uh, I remember when I was in law school reading uh, his famous closing argument in the Leopold and Loeb case uh, and being so moved by what it was that he had to say. Uh, I was um, uh, honored to have the chance in my life to campaign against the death penalty in my home state of Maryland. Uh, as a state senator, I led uh, the floor fight to abolish death the death penalty, which we did um, in 2013. And um, I uh, invoked Clarence Darrow um, and uh, tried to carry on in his spirit. Uh, we had uh, a guy who was convicted of the most brutal, grisly, gruesome rape murder uh, you ever could have imagined, named Kirk Bloodsworth, um, but he swore that he didn't do it, and he was on death row, um, and we very easily could have executed an innocent man. He read about the advent of DNA evidence and um, wrote to his lawyer, begged his lawyer, who is now the chief judge of the District of Columbia Superior Court, Judge Morin, Richard Morin. He begged him to get a DNA test. Um, they found the evidence, which actually was supposed to have been disposed of, but um, the judge in the case had an assistant who never believed that Bloodsworth was guilty and she had saved the physical evidence in her desk. They found the evidence, um, they performed the DNA test and it came back more than 99.9% .9 certain it could not have been Bloodsworth. And they actually found a positive DNA match with uh, someone who was already in prison with Bloodsworth, uh, a floor beneath him in Maryland. And that guy uh, confessed to the crime. So I said on the floor to uh, our friends across the aisle who were defending capital punishment that the death penalty is a great system for people who think that the government is perfect and the justice system is infallible. Usually that's not what we hear from Republicans about the government. Usually government can't do anything right. Here they were saying government couldn't do anything wrong. But obviously in this most extreme of scenarios, uh, the government uh, could very easily do something wrong. And we know has done, has convicted hundreds of innocent people. And that's uh, one principal reason that the death penalty doesn't function for us. So anyway, I was proud to be involved in uh, that work of uh, abolishing capital punishment in the state of Maryland. Um, I'm also proud, of course, to receive this award because Clarence Darrow was such a magnificent and eloquent champion for the separation of church and state. Um, and here he drew upon uh, the deepest wellsprings of American constitutional and political thought. Our um, Founders were Enlightenment liberals who rebelled against centuries of religious conflict and religious war, the wars of religion between the Catholics and Protestants in Europe, which were every bit as brutal and vicious as the wars between Sunni and Shia today um, in the Muslim world. Um, our forefathers and foremothers wanted to go in a different direction, and they said, look, we want to break from the religious wars, from the Inquisition, from the Holy Crusades. We want to break from the witchcraft trials and 
the blasphemy laws and the apostasy laws and the heresy laws. We want to put government on a secular and rational basis. Um, and that's why we got our First Amendment. Um, thank you, James Madison. Um, we got a First Amendment, which gave everybody um, a uh, right to freely exercise religion as they see fit, a right of freedom of speech, and also no establishment of religion. Um, and I think that that is what resonates, of course, with the, the name of uh, your strong and growing organization. No establishment of religion, free exercise of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom to pe petition government for redress of grievances, freedom of assembly, freedom of the press, all of these freedoms of the human mind to go together. Um, and that was a great uh, breakthrough victory in our constitution for progress of human society and human understanding. And it allowed us to say that government would be concerned with uh, reason and we would try to govern based on reason and based on uh, a passionate commitment to the rights of everyone. Uh, and that's basically what our whole history uh, has told us that we have a trajectory of freedom in our Constitution, and uh, that's got to be a central commitment of what it means uh, for us to defend American constitutionalism against attack. So um, this is uh, important to me. I, I can't say, and perhaps I'm saying this in the spirit of Clarence Darrow, I can't say I agreed with everything that he did. I thought he obviously had a, a brilliant and stunning performance at the Scopes trial in 1925. I think it may have been unnecessary to humiliate William Jennings Bryan in the way that he did. Uh, I think that uh, we can stand up for the separation of church and state. We can stand up for secular constitutional values uh, without humiliating people for their private religious beliefs. Um, we can say that there should be an imposition of no religious creeds or orthodoxies, whether or not those religious creeds or orthodoxies are true. Um, and so it's unnecessary to embarrass people for what it is they believe. I do think, uh, you know, William Jennings Bryan, uh, who was a great populist agitator, a progressive against the monopolies in the East and the West, against uh, the railroad power and so on. I think that, and by the way, um, uh, Clarence Darrow voted for him and supported him in the 1896 election. But I think that, um, that he died five days after the Scopes monkey trial was over, and it led to a kind of breach between the enlightened, secular separation of church and state forces that tended to be in the big cities, as Clarence Darrow was in Chicago, and the rural populist forces that were fighting against um, big business exploitation. Um, and I don't think that we needed that split, and I think that split has been a tough thing for us politically, and I think that divide kind of has lasted up until this day. So we need to defend and uphold uh, the separation of church and state, all the enlightenment values that Darrow was fighting for. We should be respectful of other people's practices of their philosophies and their creeds um, and their religions, and we should try to join everybody together uh, in working to defend our constitutional democracy. And a critical part of our constitutional democracy of course, is the separation of church and state and no imposition of religion uh, through the schools. Um, the Supreme Court's ultimate decision in Engel versus Vitale in 1962 was a great landmark uh, precedent. Some of my colleagues today still walk around Congress saying this was the moral downfall of America when uh, the Supreme Court uh, banned prayer in the public schools. But like I like to say, the Supreme Court did not ban prayer in the public schools. As long as there are pop math quizzes, there will be prayer in the public schools. All the Supreme Court found is that the government cannot impose religious prayer on anyone. So thank you for this great award. Thank you for giving me a moment to share some of my thoughts with you. And uh, I hope all of you have uh, a very great celebration out there. And um, please send me uh, your thoughts and your ideas as we move forward in trying to rescue American constitutional democracy today.